In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of 1 Timothy. And to help you understand where Paul is coming from when he writes this, you have to know that Paul and Timothy have a really special relationship. In fact, in one of the letters, Paul refers to him as his son in the faith. So they have sort of a father-son relationship, definitely that of a, a mentor and a mentee, but really even closer than that. And, and I think this comes from some of Paul's own writings, where he talks about the church being like your own family and treating one another that way. So here we have Paul kind of signing off to Timothy for the first time and, and giving some parting thoughts, some advice on his way out the door. And I think that when you look at it that way, you, you really understand why Paul is, is writing this the way that he did, the reason that it's, it's in the tone that it is. It, it's an older man that talking to somebody that he views as kind of a son, giving him some life advice before he signs off in his letter. And this particular verse that we're going to look at is from chapter 6, verses 11 through 12. But flee from these things, you man of God, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Now, when I read this, and especially when I read it in the context in which it's intended, it makes me think of something very specific. There's a show that I'm sure a lot of you, especially most of my millennial audience, will be familiar with called Boy Meets World. And I think it's one of the best shows that was ever made, for a number of reasons. The very last episode, Corey, the main character, and his friends say goodbye to their teacher, Mr. Feeney, because they're going to be moving away and won't see him very much anymore. And they go to their old high school classroom and have this last goodbye with Mr. Feeney. And they ask, Mr. Feeney, you got any advice for us as we're leaving? So in the same way that Paul is talking to Timothy and sort of giving some parting thoughts for how he should live, Mr. Feeney kind of does the same thing here. And he says, dream, try, do good. And Topanga, because she's the straight-A student, and she's really good at English, and she's a writer herself, she says, don't you mean do well? And he responds to her, no, I mean do good. And his advice isn't be successful. His advice isn't go out and achieve a lot of things. By saying do good instead of doing well, he's saying go out into the world and do good things. Do things that help each other, that help other people. That's the advice that Mr. Feeney wanted to leave his students with, and it's actually pretty similar to the advice that Paul leaves Timothy here. You want to know why I end every single show with the words, stay the course, friends. It's because, just like you, I'm a pilgrim. And I'm going through this life doing the best that I can. And it's really difficult sometimes. There's always something in your way, always some kind of obstacle, always some kind of uh, unforeseen trouble that comes around the corner that you weren't expecting. And inevitably, what you do comes down to a simple decision. How you handle it comes down to a simple decision. Are you going to do evil or good? And sometimes I make the wrong decision, and I'm sure that all of you do too. But what I'm encouraging you to do, and what I need encouragement in my own life to do, is to remember to do good, to live the righteous life, to do what Paul advises Timothy to do, fight that good fight. It's not enough to fight. Fighting can be good or bad. You can fight for the right reasons or the wrong reasons. That's not what Paul says. He says, 
Fight the good fight. Remember why you're fighting and what you're fighting for. That's the good fight. There's some fights that are not worth having. There's some fights that it's better to walk away from because you would be on the wrong side. And so his advice is specific, that it has a moral quality to it. And when it all boils down to it, Paul's advice, it's simple. It's not hard to understand. But it's also not easy. Many things are, are very simple. They're just not easy to do. Run a marathon. Well, that's real simple. You just go until you hit the, uh, the recommended mileage. That's simple. Doesn't mean it's easy. And the Christian walk is the same kind of thing. But luckily, Paul gives us advice on how to do all of these things, because you'll notice that list that he gives Timothy right before telling him to fight the good fight, that's a pretty good summary of how Christians stay on the right path. Look at it. Pursue righteousness. Why pursue righteousness? Because righteousness doesn't just happen. If you are a righteous person, if you're going to be righteous, there has to be some intentionality behind it. You're not just going to wake up one morning, oh, I'm righteous. No, that doesn't happen. If you're going to live a righteous life, you've got to constantly be fighting for it. You have to constantly monitor it. You have to be honest with yourself, do some self-evaluation and say, okay, this is what I need to do better in the future. This is some things that I can refrain from doing. But the point is you cannot live a righteous life unless you're pursuing it. If you're just kind of aimlessly wandering, you're not going to find righteousness that way. Godliness. Well, that's pretty simple. Be like God. And Christians, we have it easy. Because when our religion tells us to be godly, we have an actual living flesh and blood example of a God that became a man and lived the perfect human life. We have a template to follow. And if we follow what Paul said in Romans, being conformed to the image of God's Son, we understand that to be godly means to follow in the teachings and the example of Jesus Christ. Again, a, a concept that's very simple. It's just not easy to do. Faith. You see, to be able to get through these trials that Timothy is about to undergo, Paul understands that faith is going to be central to all of that. Because you have to have faith that your God, his teachings, are there for a reason and that there's something that is worth pursuing. You have faith that God knows better than you, that his wisdom is better than your wisdom, and because of that, you have faith that your God can get you through those tribulations that are inevitably going to be coming your way. Love. The reason that he includes love here, and of course love is at the center of everything a Christian does, but I think the reason that he specifically puts it here as it pertains to fighting the good fight is that if you have love, it is the only force that is strong enough to motivate you to want to fight the good fight. Because if you don't want to do it, you're going to give up on it because it's hard to do. You don't do anything in your life that is difficult that you don't really have a desire and a drive to do. And for a Christian, where that drive should come from is love. Whether it's love for God or love for our fellow man, if we do not have love, we're going to give up on this fight. And so love is that force that drives us and motivates us to fight that good fight and to live the good life. Perseverance. Well, I think this one's obvious. The reason that Paul includes perseverance as something you need to fight the good fight is because this isn't a sprint. It's an obstacle course. And you have no idea what the next obstacle is going to be. It's going to throw you for a loop. And you've got to be able to persevere through it. You have to have the endurance and the will to keep driving forward even when it's not pleasant or when it's something that you don't want to do. I mean, it's easy to be able to sprint across flat terrain. That's not what the Christian life is like. It's not a, a gentle, breezy walk. It's something that's fraught with danger. 
There's a reason that Jesus says that the way that leads to hell is wide and pretty much everybody finds it. The way that leads to heaven is narrow and few there be that find it. And so because it is an arduous journey, we're going to have to have perseverance in order to endure it. Gentleness. I'm not sure necessarily why this one is last, but I think that Maybe the reason that you talk about gentleness, because that seems like a weird thing to do when you're using the analogy of a fight, right? Gentleness? We're in the middle of a fight. You just gave us the metaphor of being in combat. How can we be gentle in a fight? It makes me think of a specific scene from Smallville. And for those of you who don't know about it, Smallville is a TV series about Superman when he was a teenager. And so it's young Superman, kind of. And there's one great scene, and I think the creators of the show realized that it was a great scene because they actually put it in the theme song. Uh, it's one of the things that they used to promote the show. There's the scene where Superman is uh, trying to save some people, and all of a sudden, when he's trying to look for his family and look for his girlfriend, he sees that there's a meteor coming down. There's this big natural disaster that's happened. And there's this little boy that runs out, runs back to the car to get the toy, and he doesn't know any better. He doesn't really understand the situation. He's a little fella, maybe like three or four. And what Superman does is he rushes in with his super speed and wraps his arms around the little boy and takes the blow himself. You see, even though he was in a fight, you know, metaphorically, he was gentle. I think the reason Paul includes gentleness at the end of this is to remind us that yes, we're in a fight. We're in combat. We're in situations that are not good for us and that we don't necessarily like a lot of times on this side of eternity. But that's why we need gentleness. We need to remember what we're fighting for. We need to remember that ultimately our fight is to save lives, not only our own, but everybody else's. That the reason we're here on earth is to make sure that we go to heaven, that we live that righteous life, that we fight that good fight so that we can enter into an eternal reward. And also, we're supposed to be saving as many people as we can here. And so even in the fight metaphor, he's saying, yes, this is going to be a fight to live out the mission of God and bring God's word to other people, but you have to be gentle to do that because you remember, you're not in the fight to knock everybody out. You're in the fight to save souls. And that requires gentleness. Just like a, a superhero that's coming in to save a little boy that can't save himself. And let's, you know, be real about this. We're a lot less like Superman, and, and really Jesus is the Superman in this particular metaphor. But we are the ones that are charged to bring the word of God and bring the good message of the gospel to other people. And because of that, we need a level of gentleness when we're in this fight because it reminds us what we're fighting for and the purpose that we've been put on this earth for. And then right after the fight, the good fight, in verse 12 there, he says, take hold of eternal life. You see, this whole thing is reminding Timothy to take some intentionality with you when you're going out into this good fight. You have to be aware of yourself. You need to know what you're getting into, and you have to make a choice, purpose your heart to do these things because it's not going to happen by accident. In other words, take hold of that reward that we have been given. Take hold of the eternal life. Is it a free gift? Oh yeah, it's absolutely a free gift. Jesus did all the heavy lifting for us. There is no question about that. Not a single thing we could do, even fighting the good fight, would have any effect if it were not for Jesus Christ. But we still have to take hold of it. We still have to be the ones that say, yes, I will live the life that Jesus asked me to do. His blood redeems my sins, but ultimately I'm the one responsible for making sure that I take advantage of that gift. It's in the same way when we give out tickets to concerts and, and ball games and different things at the radio station. It's a free gift. You want it. You're getting it through no expense of your own. You still have to come to the station to pick up the tickets. That doesn't mean it's not a free gift but you still have to take action to take advantage of that gift. And that's really what Paul means by take hold of the eternal life. You see, ultimately we have to remember that we fight the good fight because this is a fight that is worth fighting. 
We're not in it for the fight itself. We're in it for the reward at the end. And to get as many people as we can in that reward as well. To do as much as we can to show God that we love him and to obey his will. That is a fight that is worth fighting. It is the good fight. Stay the course, friends. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.